Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and riveting uh, stream with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to a glorious 1v1 on Bryansk Winter. In the West stands Dev M for freedom, democracy, corporate consumption. Rolling out here with a third armor division tasked with breaking through the forest here held by in the East, Asia Blah, fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Here with the 15th Panzergrenadier Division shipped in from Sicily to punch through the Allies. We got mechanized, airborne, and recon support. This is a classic set. Not much mechanized versus Blitzkrieg, Jaeger Infantry, and Spearhead. Very much the classic set of German commanders as of late. Wow, I hope they've got a change of uniform. They're not wearing their shorts, getting used to those citrus infused islands of Sicily. Asherbar's got a stern task ahead of him, Dane. He's he's a he's a decent player, Asher. He's a proper good auto match contender. He's been in lots of tournaments too. I'm sure you've cast a lot of his games, but he's up against a very fearsome former name that Dane, I bet you've not actually been able to cast many DevM games in the past few years. Oh, quite some, but there's also like he just doesn't like have periods where he just doesn't play the game at all and just mostly participates in tournaments, so he's not necessarily one I cast too much of either. That's and what I was, was thinking. He plays so many scrims on, in, in secret. He doesn't even engage in the auto match sphere. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, see you cast DevM for the first time in a while. We've got Ashablar pushing up with his MG42 Grenadier builds. And, and Dane, you familiarised yourself with this snowscape a little bit in the, the wait, didn't you? What do you feel about the map? The map so far has some interesting elements. There's not really a lot of like potential like just choke point or just players sitting back with artillery, which can be some of some of the unfortunate assignments that creep up, I find. Yeah, should be. Should be good good map for them, but there are all these flanking routes, and of course DevM is a master of said activity with his three rifles out and about and in with a shout. In the north he obviously takes his rear echelon to do some capping up there. Um, but the big news is Ashabar's held his fuel and he's held his ground, most importantly. And even more important, he's actually making gains against DevM so far. Yep. Hold and push as the pioneers lead the fray. The grenadiers are having a little bit of frolic in the snow, looking for an angle on these double suppressed riflemen. And there we go, nice northern flank here, catching the machine gun off guard. MG's in a spot of bother, and it's an early grenade from DevM. MG's really going to have to get out of there. The last soldat is quite healthy, though. Double grenadiers remain, however, they're surrounded. But with grenades, this engagement is becoming a lot more perilous, and there's these chance of a wipe here if Asher Blossom ran for too long. He gets out of there. Do we have a grenade on retreat? No, DevM did not get it off. And he's going to have to hold the cutoff now with the new Grenadier squad, but the fuel the may fall. Very likely here, and the best part, or the best plan might for Ash like to just switch northwards instead of like pushing into this. Yeah, that's a really good shout, Dev. I mean, he's... The sorry, I'm calling. It's a really good shout, Dane. He's back in base right now. He's got two Grenadiers that can have to reinforce, so he may have to re-emerge on the northern side of the map. Enemy has driven a wedge yep, in less, our lines. Well, overall resistance there from DevM, so the best play to just make a lot of gains fast. Look at this low Enemy health Grenadier as well. No med packs territory. available thus far. He's going to have to fight with half of his face missing and three legs between four men. Yep, but we are getting tech at least, so... I'm just going to bring on a new feature right now. These are the player cards for DevM and Ashablar, showing their kind of relative, relative skill levels in various statistics and also their tournament pedigree. So just soak that up for now as we head back on over to the snow and see how uh, DevM kind of snowballs his start because that's what De he's great at, uh, Dane. He's great at building a big, huge snowman that is it basically wins him the game as early as possible. He does tend to play very aggressively, and with the, particularly with the American faction, which is also extra snowbally, this very much fits in, like you know, something that fits very well. <laughs> he's, he's, tell you what, he's gone for it. He's gone in with the MG42, leaving himself vulnerable to this three squad. DevM gets for tacking. He's also got an SMG amongst his crew members. He's pushing in the MG. He's getting pushed away. The low health Grenadier stands in the way, but he could fall soon enough. Also worth yeah. noting, what's the usage of the smoke there to really disrupt the machine gun setup as well? 
Okay, good. The good news for Ash though is he's, he's gone north and he's held some standard territory points up there. So although Devon has had a high fuel uh, for most of this game, we have had Asher having good territorial control in general. Indeed, and we got a fourth grenadier build, so could be Jaeger infantry here. Yeah, could be. He needs a lot of munitions to make that doctrine fully work for him, but he's held the high munitions for a good stand, a good amount of time. He's got 100 and counting, but we're really worrying now about DevM's teching, and if we see the mechanized platoon command post is unlocked, and he's now got the Stuart building, so yeah, that's going to be a tricky foe. But might like to be to get out a fast Telemann here from Asher Blanc, just hope to hit that Stuart with it. Yeah. Uh, he's currently focusing on getting light mechanized down. Let's hope it's not going to be a 2 2 2 He's going to have to go for a pack 40 first. And, and if Dane and I are overly concentrating on Asher Blanc, it's because he is the underdog in this uh, scenario. I mean, DevM is, uh, is a ferocious beast. This may be his last community tournament before he becomes a Relic employee, so I think he's going to try and make a statement. Possibly, and there you go again. Good use of smoke here, further disrupting Asher Blanc's defenses. Grenades are in, but he's wasted, wasted a lot of munitions on them, but he's gained ground and cover. So they're really good for disrupting the Vermat player, even if they don't technically kill him. But a lot of health damage there, and he's going to go home to the ambulance. Indeed. Asher Bloss seems a bit rattled at the moment, actually. He really does. He's all shook up, and the Stuart's going to shake him up even further. That's going to be a real nightmare with what he's got currently. Oh, Ren could go down here. He's got so many... Oh, don't even have to talk about it. He's already dead. Yep. And I think it's only going to snowball from here, honestly. Asher does tend to stick into a battle until it's well and truly over. He's not an early quitter. But let's face it, at this point in time, the betting would be off. It would, it would. Odds are fairly low turning it around. Be a good map for OKW versus US. It's very uh, Ardennes in feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's also kind of what the factions are designed towards. Yeah, bursting through the woods in a last gambit. But um, it's actually based off a, a Russian logging town. Uh, who were formerly a farming district and then become a bit more kind of industrialized and cut all the trees down. And I was speaking to Vector about how his vision for it. Hmm. They didn't have all those five year plans. <laughs> they certainly points. did. Steel production up. Fatalities up. Stalin happy. I mean, didn't take much to please him. No. What would you get Stalin for Christmas? Would you get him a, nus a moustache net, maybe? What do you think he'd like? I'd probably get him a bullet between the eyes, but... <laughs> nice one, fair enough. Fair enough, it's a good good, good gift for any uh, Soviet dictator, actually. I don't think any were ever assassinated, though. KGB were working overtime. As we've nope. got... <laughs> There were probably a few coup attempts then, like some got pushed out, like Khrushchev, but no real assassinations. That's amazing how many Hitler survived. The guy had nine lives. It nearly well, it was lives just... Basil. Yeah, but he also just made a habit of just being unpredictable, which made it much harder for him to be assassinated. Yeah, methamphetamine will do that for you. It really, really raises your unpredictability levels. As the riflemen push away the MG42, Stuart pushes him back. So we're providing some light entertainment for what a game that currently feels like a foregone conclusion, but the yeah, rubber band... Sorry, Dane, go on. Yeah, it's pretty much over, like, Asher Blood's not able to put up a piece of front line at this point. Grenade on retreat, no. Just gonna oh, put him down. Yes, there it is. Oh, that's very dead. One last shot should do it. Any should do. There you go, back in the head. Now Stalin yep. would approve. 50 cal for Dev M. He's also gone for airborne, not that it really matters. Now, let's do a uh, kind of autopsy on what Asher could have done differently versus Dev M. In Pyrrhalane, is there anything you could think of that would have helped him against this onslaught? 
Well, I mean, my personal suggestion is always like, you know, go for Panzer Grenadiers. Like, people tend to sleep on those, I think, quite a bit there. And then we give them actually blow something more, a bit more offensive in terms of, like, DPS. They could, I think, push a bit harder, back harder at them, but also, like, actually probably return too fast towards the south again really should just push hard northwards and establish a new front line there instead i think that's the that's the one we we should have called uh, definitely because you can afford to lose one big engagement as very much you get pushed back to base it's what you do next that really counts and he decided to push out with one gren one mg and and i, I feel like he had a he had a possibility of going north maybe um although this south southern district is so much more open um uh, but anyway the score is one nil to devon Yep. live and we're back and um dane we had a short match there but it was fairly enjoyable to cast hopefully they pick up from there i guess indeed indeed we shall have to see how ashabla reacts to that loss what lessons they try to take i lost it more let's have a little look at the stats screen here um just see this surge from dev M. He, he absolutely as soon as the steward hit <laughs> it dominated him it wasn't gonna happen Indeed, but also just those early grenades. And it's kind of predictable, though. But the, the interesting thing about this tournament, I was explaining to Dane before, it's allies versus Axis, meaning what you sign up as is what you play as, unless you obviously come up against the same faction. Um, so Ashable has time, and I want to see what this next map is. Let's have a little look. So they've chosen the maps, and it's very important because hopefully for Asher, he's got Nexus in game two. Now Nexus is there, Matt. I think is a little bit more easy to establish yourself. What would you say, um, Dane? Mm, honestly, that one can go either way, particularly because that map I believe has more resources against like some of the other maps too. So you can also like more snowball hard on that map, so you could actually go against the Wehrmacht very quickly. Yeah, fair enough. I'm just inviting you to another lobby. There we go. The next game starts in three minutes time i see what you're saying though yes uh, the resources can work in either of your favors 12 standard territory points versus the usual 10. um so, so yeah and we'll be back with that in a second guys i'm gonna go grab a coffee and uh the next thing you'll see on the screens is the uh the game starting cheers <laughs>
Three, two, one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second match in this riveting series between DevM and Asher Blah with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one and the only master of propaganda. In the West, we got DevM fighting for the Red Army, the Soviet Union, the Bryansk Liberation Front here with the Six Guards Tank Corps with Armored Assault, in fact, with T-35s, Radio Intercept, Vehicle Crew Repair Training, Eyes to Heavy Tanks, and the Sturmweg Attacks. First and least, it is Asher Bloch coming up for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, here with the first Panzer Division. Interesting commander choices as well. I mean, he didn't actually get far enough to think about choosing a commander last time, but we expected him to think about Jaeger. Um, one thing to take into account, of course, this is a semi-finals, and they're looking to get forward to the grand final tomorrow, but Commander Terminator is now active. So we have the possibility that uh, Devon will not... Well, we know Devon will not see Armored Assault tactics again in this tournament. So once you've used it, you've lost it. Interesting. That keeps things fresh, you know, Dane. What do you, what do you think? Oh, yes. It can work out in that favour, though. It can also be a bit unfortunate for players with, like, certain play styles if they suddenly found themselves out there, you know, favourite tools. Ah, Twisted Tootsie. Yes, indeed. Uh, Pioneers putting down the sandbags in the north. There are versus combat engineers up there. Scores, of course, have been updated. We've got Devon 1 0 up in this best of five series. And he's going for a sniper on the snow. So we're going to see blood. Rivulets of blood, of course, mm. over the white fields. Indeed. I wonder if this could be like an attempt to force Asher Blood to go for Jaeger Infantry, maybe. Because the ambush training can be well, like one of the ways to like fight back against snipers, in my opinion. Let's go for a sweeping cinematic of this gorgeous map. Looking very pretty, isn't it, Dane? Making you excited for Santa Claus, perhaps? Well, if we could get some snow here in Denmark, that'd be nice. The sniper makes his way forward, or her way forward. My bad. Sorry about my gender pronoun usage there. But uh, she, her, is. Uh, <laughs> looking for a shot on the pioneers. It's going to be the MG42 that ends up being the target of choice, it seems. Yep. As your block continues to wield the machine gun fairly aggressively. Do you have... Which I find is crucial as the Valmark, but yeah, at the same time, you don't want to be like reckless with it. Now, this MG42 again has got its work out for it for Masha Bloy. Just have Grenz joining the fray. So they're going to be okay. The sniper, meanwhile, has claimed her third kill. And she's hungry for blood and she wants more. Indeed. The question, of course, is how does Asher Blood counter it? Counter sniper, armored car, or my personal favorite, ambushed MG42. <laughs> I noticed that uh, a counter sniper was never the option there. Not your favorite facet of Co 1 or Elite Tournament gameplay, I suppose, Dane. I always found the sniper to be a bit of a bizarre inclusion in company who's given design. Yeah, I, I, I have actually, I don't know if it's NDA to say or not, but I do know that it wasn't a Relic's original intended design for the, the unit. It was originally intended to be more of a support weapon. Interesting. Yeah, I actually think it'd be great as one as well. I think it should have... Uh, a free fire mode, but with no crazy range or sight bonus. But then it goes prone, and you set it up as an MG gets set up. As the as conscript sets itself up in a perfect position here. And forces a mass exodus of Wehrmacht infantry. Their morale is not very good here. Yeah, it's looking a bit rough there. And we got full gun ears again. And no tech this time, first your block. And um, she's just constantly keeping out of on the ropes. Oh, this guy's a beast. Unreal. I was saying, I mean, it, then they're a support and you drag, select, set them up, and then they can see really far and shoot really far. I think that would be a cool um, change to the sniper. Well, the current sniper iteration, these feels more like Call of Duty anyways. Indeed. With a 360 yeah. snow scope. Exactly. So, so for me, it should have like an SU-85 kind of sight, um, isosceles triangle of death mode. You lay it down, it's drag selected, and it can see a print like a... A slice of pie, a very thin slice of pie. Of my uh, my thoughts. I'm sure many elite kind of tournament people hate me for saying it. Oh, you know, we all have our different opinions on different matters. 
But it's the right time to have them now because we actually have Co3 coming, Dane. It's bloody exciting times, isn't it? It is, it is. I'm looking forward to it already. Me too, me too. Sniper's now up to her eighth kill. Grenadiers are going south, so Ashablar's heard our criticism from that earlier game of not changing his uh, his setup in terms of which avenue he chooses. Gren Grenza taking the central compound here, and the conscripts are offering themselves as a meat shield for Svetlana the Svetlana the Destroyer, as I'm labelling her. It's a tongue twister. You have to try and say it. But Lana the Destroyer, I don't think that's too much tough of a challenge there. Well, anyways, <laughs> bit of a skirmish in there. I mean, I think also recently switched south this because it's much more useful, like she was say, dealing with the sniper. There's a lot more shot blockers that favours Asher Bloch in the southern half of the map there compared to the north side. The sniper has now claimed 300 manpower worth of death, Dane. It's, it's so powerful in the right hands. Yeah, which does make it questionable that Ash Blood decided to go for four grenadiers and not just tech faster. It's a Christmas turkey hunt! <laughs> you know, more grenadiers. Yeah, it just seems fairly shooting. inefficient. I mean, all we got DevM here with a six minute T70 on the way. Oh, God. It reminds me of the bad old days, the Soviet Windustry days. Yeah, I mean, again, it really highlights, you know, Nexus is one of those maps like a good early map can just really snowball out of control. And of course, we got the mines as well. Yeah, I just saw that. The guy just flew into the screen over there. Okay. So this is not looking particularly great for Asher Blot at the moment. It really isn't. I don't know. Like, everyone knows DevM just literally gets a vehicle out ASAP. There is it's literal... Look at that. 6 minutes and 54 seconds T70 in 2021 is pretty difficult to achieve, and he's done it. Yep. Really just highlighting the sheer tempo he's working with here against Asher Blow. Yeah, it's a, it's a master class so far. Let's hope in this best of five series, rubber band potential, that uh, Asher Blow comes bouncing back. Our is to try his well best. Indeed. Got the armor on the way there, but that's not going to help against the T70. No, it isn't. Tripwife left 15 munitions as another fatality. Curs T70 is going to add a few more to the tally. He's going forward aimlessly with a Faust offered. Meanwhile, yeah, we've had a rifle nade on the conscripts. That was dodged in the north. Pushing forward from Devem. And we got more mines in the north as well. As I say, push and hold. Push and hold. And the mines allow him to do that. Although we do have a mine super going north, but it's relatively unsupported. We have a T70 running ramp shot with its second kill. Just more aggressive maneuvers from Dev M. This could be one of the quickest best of five series of all time at this rate. Yeah, this could be really swiftly done with. Dane, this is our first tournament series we've ever cast together after knowing each other for 10 years. And we're greeted with uh, a, a very <laughs> Blitzkrieg style attack from Devon. Yeah, I mean, he is a very aggressive player in Azure Blah. Clearly, he's struggling with this absolute sheer rapid pace from Devon. He played into his hands with the full granite. At least he's getting the pack out this time. But this sniper, uh, she's going to be a, a goddess of war. I, I can see her getting 50 kills at this rate. Yeah, it would last that long. Bit panther fast, the T70 this time around at least, but... Odds continue to look pretty horrid. DevM's game sense tells him that there's no imminent threat, so he's going to keep the T70 in the confrontation. He has every right to do that. Well, that and Radiant Intercept. Of Who needs course. game sense when you got Radiant Intercept? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm just trying to big up the players. It's my job as a tournament promoter. And if they do something cool, it's because they're just geniuses. Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, again, he is a good player. I mean, he's definitely making all the right moves. And part of it is also, I think, just armored assault with that radio intercept gives him, like, a further intelligence advantage over Ash of Law. Yeah, one of the best abilities in the game for certain. Sniper now claiming her 17th kill. Jesus Christ. Yep. 
going to lose the veterancy on the MG here. No more incendiary rounds. No more machine gun either at this rate. If that Devin gets his hands on it. Ren stands in his way. It's a five-man squad. Oh, no, but the sniper's still opening up. We do have veteran grenadiers trying to hold the line. But the conscripts are drawing in from multiple angles. Yep, the assaults are very much happening in waves here. And we still have no commander from Asher Bloor. LMGs are hunting down the sniper. She peels away, looking to get her 21st kill very soon. It's now double fuel, triple victory points for Dev M. I mean, we're looking at close to like nine times the difference right now in fuel economy there per minute. It's insanity, absolute insanity. Uh, ah, Asherblar is going for a counter sniper. This could be his way back in. Maybe, but like counter snipers always tend to be like, you know, fairly risky business. Plus, of course, again, Dev M has radio intercepts, so Dev M will know about the sniper, can just go defensive on the sniper, then just hope to bait out the other one. Showing the flare of the sniper there. She fired into the sky. 40 munitions. Didn't stop her getting flanked and forced away, though. Yeah. Small bit of relief there, Fashion Blob, but. At this rate, yeah, we already got the mechanized armor company, at which point then we could just go for the T-34-6. Mm. It's the perfect moment to push the shaft shoots uh, into the field, though, knowing that the enemy sniper's off the field, and you've got your grenadiers in position to shepherd him into a place, an opportune place to get the counter sniper away. Yeah. Once that T-34 hits, it may not matter as much. Good on you, Dane. You're focusing on the bigger problems. <laughs> there are yeah. certainly bigger problems on the way. The fuel count for DevM on this 12 standard territory point map is huge. And he's had double fuel to boot. Yep. And he's back to getting double fuel soon enough. Dane, this may be a, one of the rare occurrences where a Stug is exactly what the Doctor orders in a 1v1 elite confrontation. Because he's going to be down on his luck. And he needs to get something on the field ASAP. Indeed, but even the Stunger shot's going to take some time. Also, Devim is interesting enough going for the T-35 rather than 76. Well, that's impressive, that. Uh, yeah. Apparently, with the machine guns, it's um, anti-infantry DPS is not that far behind the 76 mil, to be honest. That's what people are telling Indeed, but... Oh, I don't, I'm not because of that, but the main gun is just still much better than the 85 in terms of like rate of fire and accuracy. Yeah, ends up pretty damn good. Pioneers are in jeopardy. Mortal jeopardy. As the T-70 pokes a shot from within the train tracks. One more should finish the job. Yeah. It's getting really lucky, that Pioneer squad. Is incredible luck. And he carried the Minesweeper all the way back to base. Running like a deranged crab man. What absolute. Big kills on the German sniper so far. Oh, he just started firing. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think this, the realization could just end up doing nothing. Pat sniper. got a good shot away. He's tracking. Oh, but he's behind the wall now. We'll get away. Ashablar is stabilizing, Dane. <laughs> well, stabilizing if like you squint. And I'm nearsighted. I got the teeth at first, trying to strike him there like a hammer blow to the kneecaps. Yeah. He's uh, stabilizing just like Paulus was stabilizing just before Operation Uranus. Yeah. Well, Pack now caught as well. And once that falls, actually, Lot is really in the dark. He is. Pioneer's there to pick it up, fortunately for him. He's got double LMG Grandies to defend this avenue. His sniper's in base. He's got his MG pushing out as well. More Grandies joining the fray. Devon, of course, is going to cap up the entirety of the map while this goes on. And it's going to be a double pack from Asher. Yep, we'll have to see what Devon responds to that. I expect a Ketusia rocket launcher. It's a really good call. It's the correct call as well. As soon as he sees two packs... And these LMGs that have to hold their, their ground in order to fire, it's it's going to be an obvious choice. 
Yep, it's all just like most server players will like typically go for like they go for the tank, then they go for Gachusha, and then they mop it all up. <laughs> it's uh it's a very procedural kind of killing frenzy, isn't it? You just get the instruction manual out and you uh... Ah yes, now I should mop up the entirety of the Wehrmacht with, with one unit. Great. We are losing I mean it definitely time. tends to follow a certain set patterns. I do like the the play in Co2 at the moment, though. I, I know it's it's not quite as dynamic as some people would like it, but we do get a variety of units used at <clears> least. You know, you get one of every animal, maybe two in the case of packs and MGs. Well, and got some telemines on their final version block. Fifteen minutes into the game. Where was it planted, Dane? Uh, right, uh... I'm fairly certain it's planted, it cancel it, like... Oh, it's, yeah, it's, uh... East of that brick wall... Right out by the road tracks, because it's, it's, like, very difficult to spot, because, like, the mines melt really well in with the ground. The snow, yeah, okay, we'll find it, I'm sure we will. Anyway, Pax opening up on the T-70, one more shot required! He's spotting him for it with the secret! Operative Sniper. Grenadiers and Jeopardy, though, three modern Nagants fire upon him. Ash is trying to hold desperately here. Oh, and here it comes. The Katusha that Dane wonder what he's about. Look at the shot. Oh, my God. It's a calamity. So many units dead. That's a GG. Yep. That's a one volley GG there. Dane saw the Jeopardy that Asher was in. And the Katusha made that a reality for Ashablaw. Yep. The only issue I think is Ashablaw's playing way too safely against Seven at this point. And Devon knows exact how to exploit players that go for the safe plays. Yep. That, uh, that pattern was a pretty good one there. You can see your nine craters, eight kills, all in a tight knit location. Both packs are gone. Oh, he's keeping one alive just about. He's also got an MG42 looking to keep this pack alive in the north, but there's a sniper waiting. 25 and kills. And there we go, Devon going for the T4 from 6. Oh no, Grenadier is about to die. T70 pushes in, blocks him, and assassinates him. That was a straight up execution. It was gangland style. Syria style. It wasn't pretty. Oh, well, rarely is. Meanwhile, Mr. Counter Sniper is having a picnic in the middle of the field. He's looking for. He wants a moral victory counter snipe here. I don't think he's going to get it. Nope. He is no Mayor Koenig, that's for sure. No, seemingly not. <laughs> He's spotting the Katusha going in for the BM. Oh, no. Yeah, I think it's the final nail in the coffin. It's just pyrotechnics. It's a celebration ceremony for DevM's second win in this best of five. Yeah. Oh, oh the he got the Katusha. He sniped it. There, he got the pack pushed up and he spotted for it rather than with the hidden sniper. It's a, a slight moral victory there as he bleeds out on victory points. Got the support card though. I think Asher literally just wants the counter sniper. It's all he cares about. But unfortunately for him, Svetlana the Destroyer is in the north. Oh, he's pushing in here as well, I mean. Oh, this is all over. Yeah, I think it's been over for some time now. Yep, here we go. Just mopping him up. Clean up on aisle 5. Portuguese, Portuguese supermarket. In the German sausage section. He's going hunting for Devem Sniper and Devem's just peeling away. He's looking for him still, or her still. This is all he cares about right now. It's just about this match. I think, are you aware of what happened in the Formula One racing, uh, Imperial Dane? Mm, 
not quite. One chap was winning by 13 seconds. And then they just decided at the very last second, oh, just race it off, and they drew level. It'd be very funny if we just had a snipe off right now. But hmm. uh, unfortunately for DevM, uh, well, fortunately for him, he's now 2 0 up and no snipe off was needed. Well played, everybody. 500 victory points, annihilation. 2 0 for DevM. again waiting for this game three Ashablar's head must be in his hands right now it's not gone very well at all yeah they need to like switch up their tactics uh, significantly because they've got them uh, pretty much like down to every single last T he bloody well has and uh, we do have more tournament action headed to your screen in um, in January, February, and March of this year. We've got a big tournament, uh, I believe. Dane tweeted it out. So, I did? Yeah, you retweeted me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that you weren't aware what you were retweeting, but you certainly did. And it's the fact that we've got the M ML Finals 2022 headed to us, so that's going to be interesting. So if you're not aware of that, I'd urge you to go and um, check it out. And whilst you're at it, you could... Um, Go and support the propaganda ministry as well on YouTube. Always a good idea to make sure you're getting your uh, your we your daily dose of Imperial Dane. So I'll make sure that uh, his YouTube channel. Nine out of ten doctors recommend it, Indeed. but they don't actually. The only one who does recommend it is because I'm paying him under the table. <laughs> We've got the Imperial Dane's YouTube channel has just been um, put into the, the chat there, so make sure you're a subscriber of the Dane to support him. We've also got this Patreon, which pays for all these tournaments. Every penny goes into them, and for $10 a month, you can pay for Company Heroes events uh, in our time of need in between Co2 and Co3. We're going to need things like this to rely on whilst we wait, so uh, make sure you're funding them. Let's see if Game 3 is on its way. I'll go rescue some of my RAM back. From the memory leak gods. Dane, you're a master of um, of the Wehrmacht. How would you approach DevM differently as Ashablar? We've spoken about this in terms of games, but strategically and build order wise, what's something he could try in general that would help him? Well, honestly, when it comes to DevM, I'm Definitely not on his level, so I mean, I'll admit there's uh, probably some differences there, but I'd probably like, consider like just, you know, more aggression, more focused direction, but also like maybe sneak in either assault grenades using strategic reserves or mechanized assault or just fast panzer grenades because panzer grenades do tend to, under the right circumstances, trade better with like a lot of the basic infantry that Demon is churning out against, you know, Astro Blood, other Breifman or conscripts. And so, but trying to change the tempo of the game there, as your bluff think stands long term a much better chance. Plus, I'd be all about you know getting up to fast telemines, which is probably also another reason I'd go for the Pentagon, is because they don't need an upgrade to like perform better versus infantry in terms of munitions. Yeah, it's a good shout. And and of course, I mean, four grenadiers has to go at this rate. It's not working for him. It just isn't. Absolutely not. I might also just consider, like, a surprise, like, say, double Panzer Strike on the Panzer on these, that could also, like, you know, throw Devim off. Yeah, anything to throw him off his game at the moment. He's been too predictable. Uh, I believe the players may be taking a short break by the looks of things. Come on. Just having mm. a look now. They have every right to do that. Oh, no, they're straight back in. We've got one minute till it's live. There's no rest for the weary or the wicked, or in this case, Imperial Dane and AE. Oh, we are very wicked indeed. <laughs> Love Nest will play later, baby. You've got to, that's the name of the user, by the way. <laughs> but he's playing later, and um, Siberian GT will be casting him. So look forward to that semi final. And then tomorrow, A is going to Edinburgh for a holiday, and um, you've got Elpern and 
Orange Pest casting the grand final. So that should be fun. Two Swedish boys uh, casting on this channel. I'm going to give them uh, a few dollars each from my YouTube money. Um, Dane Yujones, Yujones says he loves you. Uh, might be she loves you. I don't know. But a lot of people love you out there, Dane. I think it's a nice thing to say. Well, I love you too, random internet persons. I love you too. <laughs> oh, God, the sincerity was, was was heartwarming at this time of Christmas. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always sincere, always. That's one of my main key points. I'm always sincere. No, indeed. And I am never sarcastic. Ever. Never. <laughs> You're British. You don't know the first thing of sarcasm. What is sarcasm? Um, <laughs> right, let's get on with it. I'm not even going to do uh, an, like a trailer. We've had enough of those things for one day. Let's just get straight in with this next game. As in the south, we have... Oh, gosh, what's happened to my bloody thing? It's not starting quite yet. This sometimes happens. It's a random bug. Well, bear with me a second, chaps. I need to figure out how to make that not happen because it's very annoying. There we go. That's better. Um, and then this will ruin us if we have that offline. Perfect. Okay, pretend you didn't see this. Alrighty. Alrighty then. <laughs> As, um, as Ace Ventura may have said, I know it's very not very relevant to a World War II strategy game, but we are seeing for the third time today Asherblor as Wehrmacht. We're seeing DevM locking in immediately with armoured assault tactics. Does he not know the Command of Terminators utilised? Well, maybe he, did, maybe he didn't read the rules. Oh, this doesn't seem to have done. Let's uh, try and message him. Um, is it a loss automatically? I'm pretty sure it would be for not reading the rules. Has he just gifted a win to Asher Blar through not reading the rules? <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle for Asher Blar. <laughs> it really is. I think it's got to be a, a, it's an automatic loss in this tournament because he's gaining immediate benefit from... An automatic game loss, sorry. Gaining immediate benefit. Um, let's just message him, I guess. In-game. There's no other word for it. I mean, a referee should do this, surely. Uh, Stern Panther, would you mess message them and tell them that Game 3 is cancelled and <laughs> Asher Blar goes 1-0 up for DevM, not reading the rules that were very, very obviously stated. <laughs> it's like straight out of an 80s Hollywood movie. There is a chance, um, there is a, ch is a chance that DevM has already noticed. So let's, let's cancel out with this. Uh, we'll let the referees do their business. He's naughty. He didn't read the rules. <laughs> um, explain, sorry, crazy chilling dude. The players after this in the semi-finals and finals of this tournament can only play with the commander once. They have to uh, last through two entire series with using different commanders in every game, just to offer some diversity to the the fans for our enjoyment as we watch them try and kill each other. Thanks, Stern Panther. Okay, let's see what they say. But um, from from our own rules, uh, we've we've said it very obviously to players in the past. They Yep. I think Ashablar needed a stroke of luck, and in this case, Devon's decided to uh, commit hurry live on air. <laughs> well, that was definitely a bit of a slip up there. I don't, I don't think he actually uh, reads the rules anymore. He's committed. He's played in so many of these events, you know. I mean, I'm sure he feels like rules is for, like, you know, nerds. And he's not yeah. a nerd. He's a cool guy. <laughs> Let's just let's just go on a voyage though and just see how if you were to look at these brackets, how easy is it to spot that it's Command and Terminator? So we're gonna go over to it now. We've not we've not not had we've had Command and Terminator in around maybe four events out of the last six we've had, something like that. So day phase two, winter comes, Commander Terminator starts. Now that is font size fourteen. And it was from his place on the brackets. It's roughly, if we do a measurement here, let's let's just see our zoom level. Make sure we're not... That's 100% zoom. Uh, I'm going to get a ruler out and measure it, Dane. I'll measure it with my fingers. It's. I around... don't think you do that on Twitch. That they, I think they have... <laughs> oh, you're not measuring that. 
It's three centimeters from his knee. It's four centimeters from his knee. <laughs> no, I've, I've ran out of measuring stick. <laughs> I can't go past four centimeters, everybody, but it's around four centimeters plus away from his name. It says Commander Terminator start. So I've no sympathy for him in this case. <laughs> If it was on page 12 of the rules subsection C, maybe I would worry. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, we need to uh, terminate some commanders. It would be good if we actually put the players' names in. Referee, who wants to take that duty? One of you can. I'll write the names in. How about that? I'll do my duty for, for the... Master League. He's paid to lead, not to read. <laughs> it's not yeah. off the Simpsons. Yep. Go. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had our little own fun. We have. Let me just not read, uh, not, sh not show DevM's things live on air. <laughs> Ah, okay. Asha says to restart. Alrighty. Um, but if we'll see what the referees say, I don't know. Maybe the players should let the referee know that they're okay with a restart. Because it seems that uh, Asha Blah has had a moment of uh, mercy, it would seem. That seems very uncharacteristic for a company as two player. It does. It does indeed. Well, it's it, you know it's, it's good to be that way, I suppose. I guess. It's up to them. I always say, ref, if the players want to show sportsmanship, they can do. But the rules are the rules. If not, and you break them with the rules. <laughs> uh, but I'll leave it up to the stern panther gods and the referees. Very well. I will invite an um, active referee, Stern Panther, into the chat. I, my, one thing I learned, Dane, is never try and cast and ref a tournament at the same time. Often ends in complete and utter misery and misunderstandings, but uh, that's why we have legends like Stern Panther around. Indeed. Ah, she's friendly. They're fine. They're having a restart. Good man, Stern Panther. And indeed, they have restarted. So let's refresh. Very well. And we've got to wait five minutes now until we get the real Game 3. The real Game 3, unlike the fake Game 3. Right, Dane, I'm going to quiz you on Co 3 features, whether you like them or not. Auto-reinforce, where do you stand? I think that's a good thing, particularly for like less experienced players. Okay. Z the zoom out, as it currently is, where do you stand? Not a huge fan of that. Not a huge fan. I feel like it takes a bit away from uh, the original design and company level aesthetics of Company of Heroes. Oh, I'd agree. I really do agree. The Wehrmacht Factions Tech Tree. Two thumbs up. Masterpiece of design there, I think. Yeah, same. I think they've absolutely nailed it. Well, the community and them, because we had a big hand in advising them, of course. Uh, how about the US, though? I think that's pretty good too, though they may want to look at like uh, riflemen with bars. I feel like there's a slight tendency they could uh, create some super riflemen that locks out elite infantry from the Americans. Mm. Seems to me that the Wehrmacht are much more dependable, and the Americans are either incredibly powerful or incredibly weak. There's no in between. They haven't got the balance right. They have these units that if they hit their peak at the right moments, they they just destroy everything. But it, they might seem to have more opportunities and they're more... Uh, you have to work a little bit better for them. It just make I think they're more fleshed out, let's say. Um, yeah, they're also more flexible. They have sort of more room for pl personal play style as well, I think. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Three minutes, 30 seconds until we're live. Well, what else is there? We can't really judge the graphics yet. But how about the overall artistic direction in general? Everything you've seen... At this point. I mean, it's already been you know, quite nice. I was like, you know, for example, I think one really big thing in Company Three is just the attention to detail, like you know, like the way for example troops slide into cover, for example, or the little like knick knack on the vehicle and tanks, like you know, there'll be helmets and you know, bolts, bits of clothing and all that sort of you know, light up on the tanks and vehicle, for example. Mm. I think that you know really adds like you know the whole 
world and livability of it. So that really you know, makes it all feel more bit more alive, which I think is great. Yeah, me too. I, I, I heard some good voice acting finally as well. Hey, Domkov, you see our flag over there? No? Well, raise it. <laughs> That's one good voice line so far, but I'm happy. It's, it's, also, uh, go on. Also, There's also the vehicles like, you know, do you know how long it takes to repair this thing? It's like, and I was like, <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, that's that's what I like. I like those subtle ones. I really do. I think Company Heroes has always had dark satirical comedy. I, I want to hear more of that. I really hope the Indians like rag on the British at every opportunity. <laughs> That'd be nice and well yeah. deserved. Definitely. Uh, also, really like the explosion effects. Like some of them are absolutely amazing. Like the Storm Panzer Fierce shot is like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a big one. <laughs> it just um, looks. Yeah. The destruction's apparently really good as well. I've seen some people test it out, and when the buildings get leveled, it, it's really, really good to look at. It's kind of battlefield esque. Yeah, but also just like even like just small engaged, like you know, pieces of like tile stones will fall off the roofs and stuff like that. It looks great. Definitely, it's. I think with more polish, we, we're in for a treat, and uh, and, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's not the same feeling heading into Co Two, was it? Was it Dane at the time? I honestly can't quite remember that it's been so long, but it's like, you know, definitely looking like it's going to be a much better start compared to that, in part because, you know, we're not like, you know, looking at one publisher crashing down, like, you know, suddenly having to switch to another. Yeah, yeah, very good point, very good point. They've had much more, I think, time to just develop this in a more calm manner without, you know, a slightly insane publisher, like, breathing down the neck and demanding all sorts of things. Yeah, the THQ was, uh, had had their interesting moments. Um, yeah, like the Company Heroes movie. <laughs> I can't believe that was actually a thing. It's so bad as well. It's really, really bad. It's got nothing to do with the game whatsoever. Yeah, and they used T-34 tanks as German stand-ins. <laughs> oh, did they? That's brutal. I, I find it so, so... How can't people make a mock-up tiger? It's a box with a box on the top. You just take a smaller tank and add a wooden superstructure to it and paint it grey with a cross on it would be I mean, much better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's what they did, you know, for Saving Pride Ryan and, you know, Kelly's Heroes. And they look so much better. You can make a Tiger or a Panzer for very easily. Yeah, in all these films, we've always had Soviet tanks used, American tanks used. They can never make a Wehrmacht boxy tank, apparently. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, they did use at least a proper Tiger in Fury. I mean, that's the only good thing about it, almost. Yes. Did I ever tell you that I spoke to the guy inside that tank? during the film oh yes uh, at Bovington I, I had I paid for a super duper tour at Bovington and um, he was teaching me how to drive a tank which is pretty cool uh, it was actually an APC it was a turretless tank with the tellers and I had to drive it around the just like driving around Bovington eh well I've actually done that and it was awesome and he was <laughs> teaching me how to do it and he explained to me that the director of Fury say Michael Bay or whoever it was he was like do what I want you to do right Okay, what I want you to do is the Sherman's going to drive down here, right? I need you to turn the turret 90 degrees to the right and then 90 degrees to the left. And, and now I need you to track both targets. Can you do that? Uh, so, and the, the, this old, old, old volunteer British guy who helped them re like rebuild the Tiger so, uh, at Bovington, he said, now, uh, let me just stop you there. This Tiger has no working pneumatics. That turret is... 18 tons and i will be turning it with a wheel that is eight inches wide <laughs> so it was a hand crank it was a very small hand like if the, the pneumatics goes in the tiger you have to use this little hand crank and it was this little old guy he's about 60 or 70 so in the film <laughs> what they had to do is this little old guy because they're bovington uh, said to the hollywood guys you cannot put anybody that isn't us inside that tiger it's too precious so he's there using the hand crank in that vital Brad Pitt going around the side scene, the only good scene in the film, or one of the only good scenes. And he's going, uh, 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 and what they ended up having to do is speed up the footage. <laughs> <laughs> so it moved really slowly, and they just double the speed of the tawny. <laughs> so the, the, yeah. the footage, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the few good scenes. Well, that and all the American tanks getting blown up. <laughs> now, 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 Dane, there was another good scene, I swear to God. No, you're probably right. I think that's about it. Um, okay, let's uh, get on with the game. It's now live. Staff, yes, it's going to happen. Shh. 
thought it was a good anecdote. That was worth it, wasn't it? Anyway, we've got the uh, third game is now well and truly live on your screens. And it is Asherblot. And this time it is DevM with a new commander. Asherblot the Merciful has allowed DevM to repeat game three. This time with airborne troop tactics. Indeed. That's an interesting choice. I'm thinking he's going for special rifle command and possibly a sniper again. It's ready to use. Could be. Could be. And... Um... This is a bloody powerful commander, isn't it? Airborne troop tactics, um, Dane. It's a, it's it's got a bit of everything in it, hasn't it? It definitely has a lot. Like the only thing it really needs is like you know, call in tank. At which point it'd just be like you know, a favorite amongst all players, almost on the level of guard motor. Yeah, it, you just remove airborne rally points and give it a T thirty four eighty five, and then you'd never see another commander in the game ever again. It'd be ready. that simple. Pretty much, actually. It's probably why we never got the option of doing a custom commanders. Although they did tinker with it, and we've had tournament people tinker with it as well. It's that they're probably we would figure out the best way to play the game, and it would be as simple as having a, you know a call in tank and a call in machine gun, a, a nice big aeroplane from the sky, and maybe some call in infantry, and we'd be good. We never have to use yeah. any other units. Yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be a bit dull, and I think that's why Relic never really did it. Absolutely, and we've got the sniper yet again from DevM. And Asherbloch has decided to be charitable and offer more grenadiers to die for the German cause to the sniper rifle's uh, scoped Commander. rifle. And here she is again. Probably committing to a more aggressive infantry, but at least hoping to play it more aggressively without the machine gun backing it up. It's quite Christmassy, though. She's looking uh, very fashionable in a camouflage summer uniform. Not probably the most appropriate attire, but oh well. Oh, you know. As long as they're not looking at you. No. Well, they won't be for very long at this rate. She's actually raising the flag with her mind. Yeah, but so far we got a quick push there for the car on the resources there. So it looks like they're looking to divide the map across uh, the railway line. Supply lines have been cut. Yeah, it's a bloody lovely map for that. And we've got combat engineers of Dev. I'm just chilling for now. They might be heading back to um, their own territory so they can get the munitions rolling in for the flamethrower, perhaps. What DevM tends to do. Who's closest? Now he's going to merge upon them with the conscripts. Sniper's going to make her presence felt very soon. Indeed, at least for now, Asher Blood's actually got most of the map here, though. None of the fuel points. Yeah, he's doing well. He's got the pioneers pushing in as well, the, the second conscript on its way. Fourth Grenadier yet again from Asher Blah. It's not uh, stopping. Yeah, they definitely believe in the Grenadiers. And Grens are pushing in in the south here as combat engineers. And... Fresh conscripts have arrived. Yep. Definitely like just hoping to like overwhelm oh, well, DevM with just sheer numbers fast and hope to like, you know, throw off DevM's early game. Boris Orna, the Brutal, is being pushed away. She's been shot twice in the back by Car 98 k And uh, the conscripts are re-emerging onto the field. We've had no fuel for either player thus far. Devon went quite far south in his foray and took away Asherblar's home fuel. And Asherblar's taking away the cutoff. Yep. But at the same time, Asher's getting a lot more fuel for simply just having a lot of the other points. Boris on the group gets a third kill. Oh, we got a compact in on really tricky territory here. This is a wipe. Surely. There it is. Yep. He did not survive that gauntlet. No, it was laid down with authority by Ashabloff. Getting his first squad wipe in a while. As the one man Greddy escapes the sniper's gaze. Morgan is flanking in. They could take the sniper there. Could indeed Devam's hot full retreating. You need a very good RNG roll to get the kill there. It's unlikely to happen. Yeah, the sniper has some pretty impressive received accuracy bonuses on retreat. Needed three shots, I think, and only got one of them. Probably need to be um, stationary and a lot closer. I imagine Azure's going to build a lighting mechanized comedy and push for a fast two two here. I would make a welcome diversion from his previous uh, play with uh, the pack 41st. And just the opportunity to get the 2 2 on the field in decent time would be good for the Korean. Yep. Also on a map like Amelie Fuels, like an armoured car, he is really good. Our territory. With great Are ability to control the field. 
Oh, sorry about that. No, it's okay. No, no need to be sorry. It is a good opportunity to control the fuel. It's uh, Devem's had most of it though thus far somehow, just with having I don't know. It seemed to lose that engagement, but Ashblar was not able to cap in the meantime. But now we do have the two to show on the way. Might even go for a second one. Yeah, two, 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 twos. And we got two lot machine guns up as well. Yeah, the munitions income has been great. He's, he's done well on that. Meanwhile, Devem's having to stall to get healing because his sniper is so low on health. And this is, to be honest, no, she's still operative. This could be a really good opportunity for Ashen Yama can't kill it. Could be. Grenz, meanwhile, operating as a cohesive tactical battle group. Forcing the conscripts away just by their mere threat. And let's go on board with this 2 to 2 as it goes on a merry hunt. I oh, think no. another thing in the favour of uh, Asher Blahi is there's no grenades for the conscripts. He's going to have a field day. At least that's got uh, snowy skins. The infantry doesn't seem to have done. They've been caught off guard by the sudden snowfall, it would seem. I mean, you know, that did happen a lot in the German army, at least at the start of the war. But he did. They, of course, had to famously steal all peasants' clothing from Ukraine and from Western Russia, they were wearing women's winter coats a lot of them. I mean, they all just grabbed uniforms of the Russians. Not a bad idea as well. Some of those capes on the go, perhaps. There we go. We've got a hand machine gun out, and I imagine them is going to be taking up soon as well. I think this game's going to have legs, just because Asher Bloss had a better start thus far. And don't forget, chaps, it's uh, best of five. He's 2-0 up Devem, so it's one more game, and he's in the grand final tomorrow. With a guaranteed purse of $300 and a maximum of uh, 800 Pack 40 out as well to help deal with a sudden 270. Asher Bloss taking no chances there. Borisan are the merciless has eight kills now and Conscripts draw the close the distance versus these grantees with the two to twos there to help out, gonna force them off in no time. The two to two being a favorite tool amongst many Bearmont players to help control the field against the infantry. Dushka's dushking away though, keeping the pioneer at bay. Two to two pushes in, looking for an angle. We got the weapon drops for Devem as well, the S V D forties. Having uh, a yin yana fuel denial. As Ashablaw takes Devem's and vice versa. Indeed. Victory point wise is also pretty close between the two at the moment. Yeah. Looks like we've finally got a good game on our hands, um, Dane. All it took was to, for Devem to get the wrong commander. Yep. I think also as you blood like get the head into the game, I think like you try to play again too conventionally versus Devem and Devem again just can't punish that now as you blood's like, you know, starting to, you know, back the usual place. We also got Spearhead with a mortar half track. Yes, look at this bad boy. Now this is booking the trend. Throwing some chaos into the engine and trying to be a little bit more unpredictable. Mortar half track is not very often seen in high level tournament play. It's not even seen the high level ladder play a lot either. Right, we've got a one-man grenadier with a very long retreat path. Sniper's prone. She could get the kill here. Oh, she couldn't quite get the shot away. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. Yeah, the mortar after Devon gives Azure Blood some very mobile artillery support here versus Devon. They could you know, be quite flexible use of support and attack or defense. I mean, these first shots have already diminished the health of the Dushka considerably. Going to do more damage now. Plus, the incendiary artillery at the right time could also be quite disruptive for defence. Yeah, it can really shake things up. And Amelie Fields often divulges down into uh, kind of attritional warfare, or it certainly can do. T70 is going to hope for Devon to keep things dynamic, though. And fluid, that's how he plays best. He's not the best at those attritional stalemates. Indeed not. That's more of a loveness thing. It certainly is. That's why they were very good games together traditionally. Styles make fights. That's why we were hoping today's series would be a great matchup. But so far it's been the Dev M show. Hopefully Asher Block can cancel this third episode and cause it to become a series. I mean, even the old Romans knew that. That's why they had different types of gladiators fight each other. 
That makes so much sense, yeah, you'd never have. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. It's famous in boxing, of course, so Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali being very Europe different people. Stature, approach. Also, actually, Bloods now actually going for the Hay Machine team now much later, so. Definitely wants it, but realize they need like, you know, switch tempo in the early game. And scripts just uh, keeping the pioneers at bay at the moment as the sniper now claims her 14th kill. Mortar's started to get its tally up there now with two kills to its name. It's off as an anti tank grenade, though, leaving it uh, an easy target for full point from Dev M. Has no anti tank. He does have a tank though, and that uh, 70 is diminishing the health of these grandees considerably, allowing for the pack 40 to pull up though. Will it be able to get a shot in? Yes! Good shot. There's the mortar going to work now. Four kills to his name. Grandy has come to defend it. I think it ought to consider taking up here soon. But they could also like try another like vehicle maybe and you know again just try and add the pressure against them. As well, the 2 2 is offering good line of sight for Ashablaj units, allowing them all to find targets and eliminate them. But Devam has double fuel at the moment. It's really gonna help his teching. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Ashablaj needs to shut down far before it turns the game against them entirely. Yeah, maybe one, a teller or two, and most likely two packs, let's face it. Yeah. At well, this rate, it could end up with Asher Blot having to stall for the Tiger tank. I've seen him do it before. I've seen him do it in a lot of tournament games, actually. He's quite fond of the Tiger, but he has to get himself into a position where he can stall, and for that, he's going to need support weapons. Some people may not yeah. like that, but uh, it's what he's going to need. It's also the question of it's actually going to be sensible to store for the Tiger as like you know, your first option. Yeah, usually you'd go for a Panzer IV first. Um, and DevM's going to have T-34s soon enough. But it's actually interesting, he's actually back taking here for the support and company, so... Yes. He's definitely feeling the heat here from Asher Bloss, so... There's actually a chance here the Tiger's door could work out, but I still recommend pushing out Panzer IV first. Well, at least in Austin. Oh, we've got an AT grenade threatening the 222, forcing it away. The Ura changes its direction, though, goes for the victory point instead. We also got a double fuel push here for Asher Blah. Dev, I'm showing aggressive intent. He's built the minesweeper, meaning he wants a big push in at some point or another, and he's worried about teller mines. And that just shows you how he approaches the game and why he's very different to these defensive players and why his off offensive stats are some of the best ever seen in Company of Heroes. Indeed, and now we can see Ashley Bloss going for a counter sniper as well. Definitely starting to get a bit more chaotic now. It is, and that's what we like to see. We want it to be a challenge to cast. You want to worry about where the next engagement is because that's where the, when the players are playing their best. Grenade is forced off. SVT rifles push in. This possible counter sniper of goals and zero kills at most yet to be unveiled. Well, that's about to change. They got Dimitri with the first shot. Ah, there you go. The sector has been cut off. Well, in a pine coffin block, maybe. To be honest, uh, not many of the Soviet soldiers went home for Christmas. They just kind of stayed out there. Kind of brutal. Indeed. The German soldiers had, had uh, you know, R&R. &R. They had patterns, shift rotors. Soviet soldiers were out. It's one of the many ways their man pool was so much more difficult to exhaust. Because their soldiers were out there until the end. Well, it would also be in some cases with the Germans. The Germans also had a very variety of systems, also, but some had the training and replacement battalions, which ensured, like, you know, new recruits wouldn't just, like, maybe sent straight to the front line. They actually passed through, like, veterans first before them being sent to the front line units. Yeah. Some of the more wasteful um, human wave tactics were at the, the expense of um, some of the more supposedly foreign members of the Soviet Union. It's quite sad to hear, but it's, it is 
it is the way it was. The, it wasn't just racism on the side of the, the Wehrmacht, it was also on the side of the Soviet Union themselves Enemy at times, which is quite sad. But, and, uh, the Americans. <laughs> and the Americans. I, I really, I'm glad that we finally see some African Americans in uh, World War II. Uh, and some Indians. Heroes, though. The bazooka troops, that'll be interesting. Yeah, but also just like, you know, generally foreign troops, they tend to get overlooked a lot. They do. Like the British were terrible for it as well. Oh, and we get the counter snipe off. Ashablar pushes up the spine of the map. And we've seen Devem dashed against the snow there. Boris Orna, she died so young. That is a significant tactical edge there for Ashablar. Now, now they're the one bleeding out Devem, and Devem just lost a significant tactical tool for stressing out Ashablar. Oh, but this this barrage that could cap that could annihilate the Grenadiers. First shot was a lot of health damage. But not enough either. Devon caught sleeping. Perhaps getting a bit overconfident. The enemy is taking our territory. No sign of further tech there from Devon or Ash of Lodge yet. We need some Quite 18 Aiden, no follow-up present. Just gonna keep the 222 from being overly productive. For the time being, 274 to the pioneers in the east. Ashablar's fuel count is suffering, but he's on for the tiger stall at this point in time. So he's actually got pretty much where he wants. No, he hasn't done any teching. So yeah, but we got the second pack 40, which is near universe language for "I'm going for the big tank." <laughs> Me go big tank, <laughs> indeed. Pretty much, pretty much. Very simple caveman-esque language. As the combat here is forced away by the. Grenadier is here. He's going for a reconnaissance overflight. Let's look on the tack map and see how much he can see. Yeah, we have fucking four. There we go. Yeah. Gun is ready for orders. Yeah, getting a good idea of the base there. Can you see the base for that? Not quite though. No, he sees a glimpse of it for a moment. It still gives him a good idea of this, what the is up to. Grenadiers in the west, T17 looking for its 8th kill, bunches up the Grenadiers, gets a lot of health damage, but no fatalities at this point in time, there we go. There we go, there's your money shot. Michael backs away having claimed his 8th kill with us. his absolute opponents now vanquished. We can operate with uh, relative impunity. Ooh, caught laying down sandbags for some mortifier there. Is this barrage incoming? Oh, on the sniper, so low health! Oh my god, that was so close. Oh, the follow up nearly hit him! <laughs> that would have been some absurd luck if it had happened like that. That was very close. Back in Co 1, that would have been a kill. I always remember Pax getting random counter snipes in Co 1. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe the snipers were just much more worse there because they could just like camouflage no matter where. Oh, it was terrible, wasn't it? Just like, uh. And the worst part was like if they got two snipers, it was like just. uh. kill me. <laughs> well, it did. <laughs> yeah. And we finally got some tech there first, you blow. We also got Devem with the tech there. He's going for Katusha though, definitely looking to like smash apart Asher Blast defensive formation again. Also, he has the IL-2 rocket run available, so uh, no, no T-34 first for the... He hasn't got anything he needs to ram, so yeah. But it's just a nice tool to have there. It really is. It's the conscripts versus these Grens here, but the packs fighting back. They both are. One fire through the bushes. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. We also got our fragmentation bomb ready. That could get really uncomfortable for Devem if you slice properly here by Asher Block. Yeah, finds him and he's finding him right now. The packs are lining up this T70. The overshot could kill the Kadusha if he's not too careful. Fortunately, he can't see it right now. Or can he? That reminds Has the 222 some... seen it? He may have done. He may have done. Yes, oh. he could, but he did not pull the trigger on that. The safety of yeah. the base hedgerow saves the day. Close call, though. 
I'll also run to the times when it sounds like, you know, a straight tank shot goes like halfway across the map and then takes like the choosing, for example. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that happen many times, yeah. Yag Tigers are very good at doing that. Not very good at many things. No, but Eren's shots killing Katushas is a 4v4 speciality. It's the Katushas. I thought I heard rocket fire for a second, but maybe not. Here it is. But Yep. Ooh, that's going to be pretty painful, eh? Possibly. But no, Fortune seems to smile upon Asher Blood this time. That was actually a really underwhelming procedure barrage. It was. I could sense it would be. The MG was the only real target left. Shows that moment to uh, get cinematic on the go as the sniper pushes forward. 2 2 gets the first shot, though. And Annihilates them having the temerity to build a sandbag. We also got the T-34 on the way, but Azure Blast not too far away from the Tiger Tank, and we sort of look at what Dome currently has to stop a Tiger Tank. There's actually chances could work out for Azure Blast. Yes, well, it's going to be the famous uh, ram into uh, rocket straight, but with no T, uh, sorry, no Zis guns. Well, he's only got the one actually, but he's certainly not got plural. Most people at this point in time find themselves with two Zis guns, and probably have had a. A T-34 rampaging around for a while. In this case, the, the Tiger's not too far off, and as I say, it should have a relatively happy period of hunting. And, like, if the ramming or the rocket strafe goes wrong, then Devem is really out in the woods with no trousers on. Yes, and that's not where you want to be. Absolutely not. See, I'm not in the Russian woods. No. <laughs> right. Packs, meanwhile, have um, had a decent foray so far. No kills yet. The T-70s managed to evade. And for how long? Yeah, seem to get a target weak point. Yeah, he's got the one option available to him. Grenadier kill-wise, we've got 19 and 14 on your 2 3-star Terminators. Okay. I think DevM's lining up for a big push here on the western fields. Oh, I've just seen a frag bomb initiated. Oh! Ow! Oh, not much done there. A crew shocked, yes. But DevM was not shocked. He was slow and steady. We've got a T-34 assembling and marshalling for an attack on the western flank, perhaps. Yeah, it's already happening. It's uh, Asher Glow's not handling this well, they're really betting everything on that fucking bomb to... Uh, oh, he's gone for the rocket strafe on the mortar half track! Desperation, but actually, he may have. Ki no, the grenadier's killed the combat engineer. I thought the rocket strafe may have done. And there's a flame for a drop, and he can't pick it up because of this before the upgrade, but the grenadiers can pick it up. Ooh, packs find the T34 in the meanwhile. Yes, oh, indeed, we have, could have a Terminator Vet 3 LMG flamethrower grenadier soon. Yep, that's going to be a real nightmare for Dev M. It is. He can pretty much do anything now. C70 doesn't want him to have it. Oh, and Asher Blaw's worried. Oh, God, it's the Asher present. Blah, every <laughs> coward. It's the present every, every kid wants for Christmas. The Rock 9 Flamethrower. And then the Tiger Tank is now open there for Asher Blaw. Good spotting attack. here, but the Katusha's just creating snowball balls. No target found. I'm picking up the flame for the bunny as well. Is it nice. non-pickupable? It's not pickable oh, pick to me. Shot there. There we go. Ah, he's got it. So we've got a multi-utility Swiss Army pioneer. And we got the Tiger Tank out here. Packs on and car sniper lining up to support it. Air yeah, reconnaissance. 64 ton BMOF, the destroyer of worlds, the 88 mil cannon with high explosive. Does nothing on his first shot. Actually, get to kill Yevgeny there. Just, uh, this grenade is not going to get any more kills in the north. He was misclicked into the into oblivion, into the abyss. That's unfortunate. But the tag team scored a few more kills left. The Consco squad rather disemboweled. Kills in total now as the tiger goes forth. Shot bounces. 
be honest, he was quite close to population cap, so Ashenborn, I know he didn't sacrifice that grenade, but it's not the end of things. Yeah, it's probably not all terrible. Let's see what the place with more infantry or maybe something else. SU 85's the call from the Portuguese Progedy. Oh, as the T 34's found, the 2 2 goes forward to spot, and the packs finish him off. This is time to look like a blog win, actually. He does lose a pack. Grandi, however, escapes. Dushka's still attacking. 2 2 2 pushes in, gets some more shots away. There we Looking go. Nice as a smoke by the armored car to allow the Pani to advance on the pack 40. Pack crew member runs at the enemy in his last assault. Tiger goes forward. He's got six kills to his name at the moment. Tusha cannot finish the pack's crew off. And indeed, it's wheeled to safety. But the other pack is now open for them to seize. Ah. Indeed, it is just hidden by the flagpole there. 2 2 2's going in for the Katusha, though. But the SU 85's there to finish it off. Oh, wasn't expecting that. Nope, that was a small reprieve there for Dev M. That's what we like. We're getting many reprieves here. We're getting a, a relative orchestra of destruction. Could go in either player's favour. SU-85 versus T-34. Sorry, versus Tiger. Much bigger than a T-34. And it's backing away, but it's a pack to protect it. Another than this one will Honestly, Asher Bloss should actually be going for more pioneers to speed up the pace. Desperation rockets take out the pack. That's all they're going to do. We got to go to the escort to sneak in here on the car point. He's being very sneaky. But he's been spotted by the flag itself. We could have taken out the T 70 if he'd known. If only he'd known. Yeah, if he had known, that would have been the end of the T 70. That would have been a huge win there for Asher Bloss. All right, let's take stock of the full army sizes. We've got roughly the same population cap. We do have a pioneer building. However, conscript-wise, we have three. One is seven-man, two have SVTs. We have one MG. We have a stolen pack 40, a ZIS. Meanwhile, we've got a VET 3 T70, an SU-85, and a Katusha. I'll hand you over to Imperial Dane for the running order for Ashablar's army at this 27-minute mark. What do we have, Dane? Under the German command, we got four Grenadiers, all the lap machine guns, three of them ace level. We finally got two Pioneers to assist with repairs. The Veteran to do Sniper, the Veteran 242 to the Pack 40. A heavily damaged Tiger tank with a proper run through. And a near ace level mortar half track. Currently, the Katusha is attacking the MG42. And the next question was going to be Dane whose army do you like better at this point in the game? Hmm. Actually, a tough call here. I can feel like both have good sort of armies, but I think I favor Asher Bloss a bit better because it has more infantry. And I find yes. like late game more infantry is like actually like really important. And that's why he rebuilt that fourth Grenadier quite late in the game. This guy has no kill. He's only just come onto the field. Oh, he's sending him until they on the pack. This gun. Five goes ambles forward. The grenadier has spotted him. Tiger's health is now roughly 70 to 80 percent, somewhere around there. So be ready for battle once more. In a few moments, yeah. Double pioneer is doing the work swiftly. Grenadier's in peril as the T70 marches in. It itself is forced away. No one's central victory point but Devam's pushing in the west so you can see he wants to win this victory point battle which he's currently losing. Yeah we got the sniper and the gun is reacting to this little incursion swiftly. There he is big daddy tiger ready for war once again. We also just got the mortar after just constantly killing away. I think that's also another advantage the mortar after has over the Katusha and other rocket artillery. While they can make big splashy strikes, the problem is they have so much downtime between them as the mortar after is like, you know, oh, I messed up their barrage. Let me do it again in a few seconds. <laughs> Indeed. Right, munitions wise, though, Devem has more. He has a Sturmovic ready, but he has no T 34, so I'm, I'm feeling like he possibly wants to slowly readdress his battle order. Oh, he is going for that T-34. Oh, Rens in peril. They need to see this. The second volley could be fatal. And they're dead. 
better than this <laughs> Tiger goes forward. Bring my hat body close, just in case. Grenade and rocket strike. It's really in unfortunate nothing. angle. Yeah. Kind of a waste there, I want to say. Without a snare or a damaged engine or a stunned crew, they're, kind of, they're very, very erratic and in, undependable. It's also just like, you know, if you sort of have a good idea how the opponent plays and you can, like, you know, typically, like, twist the tank right out of the way there. Now, this is what we're talking about if you're, um, if you want DevM to win this. He needs T-3476s because he needs to get this Tiger and stun it into the rocket strafe. He cannot just hope to take it out otherwise. And there we go. Hey, Panzer, Prop Persia Blood. The question is going to be a Storm Panzer or a Panther? Ooh, interesting call. If he'd had two packs still, obviously we'd go for the stern panzer, but now it's a bit more of a 50-50 toss-up as to which one he goes. Oh, Mortar's going to go down! T-34 goes forward, he's looking for him. That's a veteran unit of the Third Reich. It is going to indeed survive. Packs down, conscripts push forward, they're going to go for the steel perhaps. Yes, indeed, they've stolen it right at the enemy's gates. And quick merch as well. Nice decision there by them. Thumbs up. Has to be a panther now, Dane. I think it might have to be a storm panther to blast these anti tankers into dust. Oh, okay, fair enough. So he's lost his anti tank, and now he's going to go for anti tank tank. No, anti anti tank. Yeah. I was like, the three anti tankers, the panther's like going to go down pretty quickly anyway, so the tank engagement. Two sure shotgun rounds on the sniper this time. We did force a retreat from the grenadier. The mortar could bite the dust. One more volley, one more rocket. Randy is retreating through Hellfire Brimstone. Satanic material somehow surviving. That was really uncomfortably close. <laughs> that was like timed explosions and CGI in a Hollywood film. Like he was just running yeah. through it and every explosion was slightly away from him. And of course, it was an American doing it and not German because... Bit of a tough situation now for Azure Blood with six anti or three anti tankers with six man crews. Oh my Deal. god, yes. That is uh, the Tiger's demise if it's caught out in the open. The enemy that is the problem. He has to counter them. A uh, Brumbear obviously is going to be hard counter to sell, especially the SU 85 on the field. It's got to be a Panzerwerfer, surely. Yeah, but. That's not going to help much against the other armor either. And again, crucially, they only have the Tiger tanks. It's like, it's a really, really bad spot Asher blows in. Mm. I think they're actually going for the Panther after all. Yep, Panther. Mm. Well, at least he'll be able to go for the flanking speed around the anti-tank guns. Cause some bedlam, perhaps get a fragmentation bomb off. It's not over, and he's got 300 victory points. So, it, you know, it's far from the fat lady singing and she's she is she has however arrived at the arena and i can confirm she's doing vocal warm-ups i mean with the mortar after they also have the option like you know if they can spot the anti tankers and then deploying smoke around them isolating them from the rest of the devm's force then pushing them with the tanks to like crash the armor and then sort out the anti tank it's, it's a bit more of a complex maneuver but it might be actually close maybe hope well, this is why the patrons of the Master League pay their money. They want to see the top-level players doing complex manoeuvres, going the extra mile to do something different, as the Katusha annihilates a Grenadier. That wasn't something different. That was more of the same from DevM's Katusha in this game. Yeah. Starting to look like Asher Blast and Drone starting to, like, uh, run out, and DevM uh, is proceeding to display a bit more fortitude here. Are well, territory. to be quite frank, Asher Blast is not retreating from Katusha volleys. It, it, oh, that too. I mean... T-70 had a little poke in there, surveying the scenario. Just tuning in, you're wondering where Loveness Nagano is. That will be next after this series is concluded. Siberian GT will be bringing you that. So T70 goes in for the sniper, but the Panther stands in his way. If your name's not on the list, you're not coming in. Hmm. Actually, what Saints are rather scattered out at the moment. Give him a chance, like, yeah, there we go, Bram and Rocket. 
Here it comes from the sky above. Will this be a dead tiger? No. Just surviving, but we've got the anti-tank guns. They all turn around in unison and they bounce. They bounce forever. <laughs> Off we that. don't need any more devourers here to try and stop this. And they are the five tank guns as well. Finds it. Oh, Vet3 mortar down. Panthers now. A deer in the headlights against these three AT guns. Go around them, not through them. The and the armor is his paper. So it might as well be in front of all these anti tank guns. Yeah, I think this could actually end up now being DevM's win. Yeah, it could be 3 0, but he, he can repair these two heavy tanks. He's still got 79 population cap. It's certainly not quite over. It's getting there. Sorry, the uh, the body positive lady has now left her dressing room, everybody. I can confirm. We're getting reports. She's going towards the stage area. Grenadier down. We do have the wrecked T-34 down as well. However, the T-70 is going in for the sniper. Panther with a fadeaway shot. Now, I don't think uh, that Asher Blood can bounce back from this. I mean, Devon's just kind of hit that Soviet uh, critical mass, and Asher Blood's forces are just completely falling apart at this stage. They probably should have gone for heavy Supporter Core rather than heavy Pants Core to just push for some medium arm to support the Tiger at a faster level. He had a chance. He gave himself a chance, but. Dana, I, I think the best uh, an analytical call you made in this game was the strength of Asher Blood's Grenadier forces. They, they were very strong, and then one by one, the Katusha annihilated them. And I just genuinely feel Ashablar could have reacted a bit sharper to the, that threat. That's definitely, I think, one critical element. There was definitely like some issues there, but again, there could just be fatigue setting in there. But I think that's also like just that relying on the one Tiger for too long was another like issue there for Ashablar. I mean, the Tiger as well has only got nine kills, so Devem has been good at evading its 88mm gaze. Indeed. And actually, Bloss just also ended up playing so much more defensive throughout certain parts of the match. Then again, that's typically like, you know, where Devem controls the matches when he gets to be, you know, the aggressor. Best thing that Ashablaw has going for him right now is his big tank, but he's up against three AT guns and a tank destroyer. So, to be honest, he's strategically countered. A lot of chess players would roll their king at this point. Pretty much, pretty much. Another rocket strength available. The 18 men of tank apocalypse are now focusing down the tiger. It's not what you want to see. Unless you're the surf player, in which case that is exactly what you want to be seeing. Good correction, Dane. I like it. You know, Panther backs away, Tiger backs away. This Vet Zero Pioneer has a lot of repairing to do as the Katusha screeches over the skies ahead, finds the pack. The pioneers stop repairing. But, uh, oh my god. As she finds the uh, panther there. Things Vet 2 now. And Devon is just pushing at your blind to the base now. Yes, it's been a masterclass today by the Portuguese prodigy. Here it comes. Rocket straight! Oh, so close to taking out the beast. Very close. We must defend our it's going to take one sneeze and that tiger tank's going to explode at this point. Sniper forced off there. A T70 21 kill. Infantry destroyer. We are in a dangerous situation. 100 points left for Azure Blood. Well, less than that. Indeed, Vet3 for this MG, but it's a rare piece of positivity for the Korean king, who uh, seems to be dethroned here. Yeah, odds are looking pretty bleak. I would definitely not put Mon Bedman in Ash at this point. I think we need to ask all of the uh, German generals out of the room, except for a select few, because... Uh, Unless Steiner's counterattack's going to come in, this is pretty much the end of Ashablar's Wehrmacht's hopes in the semi-final. Indeed. 
short of a miracle or Portuguese secret police intervening, I don't think <laughs> Chabrol's winning this. Nobody expects the Portuguese police intervening. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, Gren's evaded Katusha Volley. The comeback is on. Dane, they've evaded one out of ten. Yeah, we got a fans of it for no fashion blow as well, and but... We have 50 points. We enemy forces are securing our territory. I'm not entirely sure that's going to find its mark. It'll have Time. to verf its best panzer of all time. And then some. Tiger Tank is at least close to Vetsuni 2. He does have a fragmentation bomb, but... It's going to require like a complete sort of like miracles to like chain together for like Ash Blood to have a chance of winning this. Oh dear. Ash Blood may have needed a Panzerwerfer sooner. Been less of a gammon Werfer earlier. Because he may have thrown this game at some vital points, losing Grandius. As yet and again the Rocket Strafe looks to annihilate the heavy armor. The Pulse Pit Sniper's down and the Panzerwerfer is going to go down as well here. He's inside the Panzerwerfer this time. He's assuring the kill. And the Panzer didn't like take out any of the anti-tank guns. The enemy has driven a wedge <laughs> in our lines. Oh god. So yeah. This is the definite GG. Uh, the fragmentation bomb just hit and it didn't kill any of the anti-tank guns. That's a bit of a shame. Tiger goes fourth. Let's get a nice cinematic just to follow polish things off. No real luck with those fragmentation bombs at all this match. No, and uh, yeah, it was it was a jolly good old uh, time. I think we had uh, Imperial Dames rather successful casting foray. Hopefully, we can do yeah. some more in the future. And uh, wouldn't mind that. No, me neither. Um, but yeah, forty-two minutes. I think for some of it, Ashablar was hopeful. Yeah, I mean, they had a really good start, but then they sort of around like the twenty, thirty minute mark, they started like you know playing too defensively. Installing out, and that was really where Dome, like, you know, just grabbed the range of the match and started strangling Asher Blow with them. <laughs> what, what, very vivid. All right, let's, let's roll on out of here. Go and have a look at the game stats, and then host Sib if he's ready. Sorry, I was just uh, as I was saying before, I muted myself. Um, uh, somebody just said that Asher Blaw had tired himself out. I don't think it's tired in the traditional sense. He may have just like tried too hard and tired his nerves out, if that makes any sense. Possibly. <laughs> I still contend with that whole, you know, losing too much time there after the tiger to not like really exploit that initial success there. Definitely, like, it comes strategic decision making wasn't the best at times, no. But I mean, let's put more of the emphasis, I suppose, on just how well Dev M plays. He's been playing this game since 2008, since he was a, a mere child. And he's now 20. He's just, just on the cusp of joining Relic Entertainment to fly over to Vancouver and become, uh, you know, one of the designers over there for Co3. And he's still on top of the game. He's still able to manhandle really really good players and make it look easy at times so credit to him indeed i mean he was just also really aggressive all the time and just knew where to like hit the players there to like disrupt their flow that's one of the best things that he preaches when he analyzes games is it's about disrupting flow and being aggressive and um and being annoying at times, you know, you never have a moment to think or rest when you're against somebody that's as uh, high energy as Dev M when he plays Company Heroes. Indeed, indeed. All right, and Dane, any further plugs from yourself? Um, 
for your YouTube channel, perhaps, and your Twitch channel? I mean, you know, feel free to join into my YouTube channel. I got daily videos for daily entertainment. That's what you're interested in. So, you know, feel free to join in there. And as you know, I mean, it's just been, you know, fun casting here with AE. That's been a great deal of fun there. So, you know, keep watching the Master League and all that. And the Grand Finals. And as you know, looking forward to Camp News 3. That's, I think, Definitely. the big thing here for me otherwise. Yeah, same here. So there's Dane's channels. Obviously, go check him out. He does indeed rock, and he's got daily content with some of the best thumbnails in the business as well. Um, so go and check him out if you haven't already. And um, I'm going to be going to a wait screen now whilst we await the arrival of Siberian and, um, of course, Love Nest and Nagano, who are getting ready to play for you soon. So thank you very much, Dane. Cheers. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Cheers.